This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Sophie Erber. Masks will be required for students, faculty, and staff returning to all Bishop Heelan Catholic schools. And it's our top story for you right now at 5. According to the Return to Learn plan released this morning, parents are expected to provide their children with masks or face coverings. However, students in need will be given disposable masks. Students and staff are also expected to check their temperatures in the morning before leaving for school. This is schools cautiously begin the semester with in-person learning. That is something that we're, we're excited about, our teachers want, our, our parents want, our students want. So five days a week, we're not, we're not starting off in a, in a hybrid or a virtual learning um, um, plan for our students and for our families. The five schools will begin classes on August 25th. You could find the full Return to Learn plan on our website right now. That is SiouxlandProud.com or check out the KCAU 9 News app. And before the first day of classes even begin, a South Sioux City High School student tonight has tested positive for COVID-19. And because that student played on the school's football team, all practices are being suspended until August 18th. The school is working with the Dakota County Health Department to handle this situation. Other members of the football team tonight are quarantining. And for a quick look at COVID-19 numbers now across Siouxland, Woodbury County officials reporting five additional COVID-19 cases. That is from a total of 49 new tests. In Nebraska, Dakota County officials reporting tonight just two additional cases of the virus. And from South Dakota, Clay County has 16 currently active cases. Meanwhile, Lincoln County reports 100 active cases. Some residents are still without a permanent place to call home tonight after a fire at an apartment complex forced them out on Monday morning. The American Red Cross has placed these residents now at the Hampton Inn that is in North Sioux City. The city has also coordinated lunch and dinner for these residents. The president and CEO of Lutheran Social Services South Dakota, which owns the Northport Apartments where that fire was, says they're working to get a more permanent solution. We have been identifying um, apartment complexes that have vacancies. We have identified places that do have openings available, have gotten applications um, into the hands of people. And coming up tonight at 6, KCU 9 News reporter Lydia Vasquez shares how the community can offer their support for these residents. An Iowa man is dead tonight after colliding with a flatbed trailer. It happened about a mile west of Hartley around 11 on Tuesday night. Officials say 67-year-old Robert Crossley of Underwood was traveling along Highway 18. That's when he drove through a road close sign and fencing where bridge construction was underway. He then hit a flatbed trailer. And Crossley was pronounced dead at that scene. Turning now to politics, both Republicans and Democrats in Congress have not been able to reach a coronavirus aid agreement, even as the expiration of the financial lifelines is leaving millions of Americans scrambling to cover their bills. Our Washington correspondent Anna Warnicke has our story. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell canceled this first week of the August recess. He said to continue work on the next round of coronavirus relief, but the two sides haven't negotiated since Friday. Republicans wanted to reach agreement on all these issues. McConnell blames Speaker Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer for the stalemate. These two individuals are letting the wish list of wealthy coastal elites stand between every working family in America. Democrats say they're willing to negotiate, but it's the White House that won't budge. The White House got an offer to meet halfway and said, that's not what we're going to do. We insist on the skinny version. The skinny version is inadequate to meet the challenge of the moment. The White House seems to be standing pat after the president signed executive orders over the weekend to fund supplemental unemployment payments, encourage eviction protections, and defer payroll taxes. The president acted aggressively and boldly because nothing else was going on. White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow says so far Congress hasn't challenged the president's orders. Democrats are in a corner on that. I don't think they're going to oppose it. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she's not interested in wooing the White House unless it agrees to a wide-ranging plan that spends at least $2 trillion. Republicans say that's too expensive. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke.
It's time now for our first check on the weather. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by for us. And Marcus, I know those temperatures were in the higher range today, pretty average for August, but it felt even warmer because of those higher humidity levels. That's right. Temperatures today reaching up into the mid to upper 80s throughout parts of Siouxland, but heat index values reaching up into the lower 90s today throughout much of the area. So a very sticky day here throughout Siouxland. We've had those humidities increasing all week long, and we're going to continue to see pretty humid weather here the next few days. High temperatures today getting up to 86 in Sioux City and Cherokee, 84 in Orange City today. 89 degrees for your high temperature in Yankton and Norfolk today, so pretty toasty there in western Siouxland. 87 today in Wayne, and as you head to the southeast, 84 in Carroll and Denison for your high temperatures today. Overnight tonight, we'll drop down into the upper 60s, lower 70s. It looks like a fairly quiet night. We might see a stray storm or two tonight. I'll have details on that and what the rest of the week's looking like in the 9 on 9. Sophie? Perfect. Thanks, Marcus. A 15-man crew of line technicians from the Nebraska Public Power District are in Iowa tonight. They're helping power restoration efforts after Monday's storm. The crew arrived in Des Moines Tuesday to assist the NPPD. They're helping mid-American energy crews in the Des Moines area. That is where an estimated 125,000 customers are still without power tonight. The NPPD does not know how long the crew will be needed to help out in Iowa. And Iowa U.S. Senator Joni Ernst and Democratic challenger Teresa Greenfield are now officially scheduled for six debates. This, of course, leading up to the November election. The campaign's releasing a debate schedule that includes an October 3rd session that airs right here on KCAU. On Tuesday, our very own Tim Seaman talked with the Republican lawmaker about several key issues, including why she feels it's important to pass her Sarah's Law legislation at the federal level. Say in the future you would have an administration like a Biden-Harris administration, they could simply undo what President Trump has done in enacting parts of Sarah's law, and they could allow people like Edwin Mejia to be released on bond, even though he had killed a young American citizen with a bright future, and allow them to disappear back into the shadows, never to be seen again. Ernst's bill is named after 21-year-old Sarah Root from Council Bluffs. She was struck and killed by Edwin Mejia. Mejia is an illegal immigrant who was driving drunk. Despite requests for ICE to detain Mejia, he posted bond and walked free. Work is underway tonight on a new piece of art in downtown Alton, Iowa. KCAU 9's Jessica Watson shares the artist's vision with us and the excitement it's now causing. Amber Hansen has been planning the mural as a tribute to Luxembourg's ties to Southwest Iowa. She says it's a good feeling and a good way to bring the community together. It's a working progress, with lines showing what this mural will soon become. It'll also be fireflies and a night sky and imagery on the border um, depicting symbols significant to the Luxembourgers. You can see the color design. Work began this week on what will be a mural honoring Luxembourgers in Northwest Iowa. I'm excited to see what it shows us about the Luxembourg heritage. There are several people living in Alton who, who have ancestors that immigrated from Luxembourg. And so this is remembering that history. Because of COVID-19, community members are coming out to help paint in shifts. The painting process is really fun. It's a time when people can gather in, a, in an open space outdoors, which I think um, is something that is becoming more valuable right now. Let's see. With shifts being staggered, the mural is expected to be done in three to four weeks. It's a really wonderful feeling to be able to start to see the colors appearing on the wall and to see the mural take form. I'm excited. I have absolutely no clue. I haven't even really been over there to look at it, so I'll, I'll see it as it goes up and finally see the final product. If you want to see how it turns out, we'll be checking back with Amber in a few weeks to share what that looks like. Jessica Watson, KCAU 9 News. Can't wait to see that. Thanks, Jessica. Turning now to social media, Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts has banned the app TikTok on state government phones, citing security concerns. The ban comes just days after President Donald Trump ordered a sweeping ban on dealings with the app's Chinese owners. Ricketts says Nebraska's ban is intended to protect the state against cyber attacks. Many children returning to school, of course, will be required to wear a mask this fall. We'll share some tips from experts that make mask wearing easier for kids. That's coming up.
In weather, it's looking like we are going to continue to see the warm and humid conditions, some storm chances here and there, and next week we'll have a nice cool down. Those details after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Marcus, it's kind of one of those hazy, humid days, yeah. sticky, not really pleasant to be outside, especially if you have to work or really exert right, yourself. Right, if you're out there and you're working around, it's definitely going to feel really bad out there. If you're in a pool, though, I think that's going to be a great spot. That would be do. nice. Yeah, the view outside right now from the KCA United Studio brought to you by the Port Neal Welding Company, showing that we are seeing a lot of sunshine, but it's very humid and a little hazy out there with the humidity. We are seeing a few clouds, but for the most part, very quiet weather here throughout Siouxland. Temperatures currently in the mid 80s. We're at 85 in Sioux City, 86 in Wayne, 88 there in Norfolk, 89 in Yankton, so almost at 90 degrees. Looking like 84 in Orange City, as well as Cherokee and 82 in Storm Lake. Heat index values, they're in the lower 90s for most of Siouxland. It feels like 91 in Sioux City, 93 in Wayne, 94 for your heat index value there in Yankton. You no, know, I'd say that I'm tired of them, but I keep hearing about uh, the very cold mm -hmm. Januarys and Februarys yeah. we can anticipate, so I'm going to embrace the hot, sticky weather. And here's the thing, I'm from North Carolina, I'm not used to the cold, and <laughs> this past winter, by all the local standards, was very warm. For mm. me, it was the coldest winter I'd ever been oh, through. Oh, no. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like the cold. Yeah, I'm a Florida girl, so I'm with you there. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, this afternoon, players on the Briarcliff University men's volleyball team grappling with the fact their program was cut. The shocking announcement came down last night. That's Tuesday, leaving the GPAC now with just five colleges involved in the sport. In the NAIAA conference, six college teams are needed in the sport to be sponsored by them. We do have reaction from players and coaches on our website soon. That'll be at SueAndProud.com, where you can download the free KCAU 9 News app. Lost in the water, a woman feared her wedding ring was gone forever, but a group of divers would not give up the search. We have her story coming up. And for parents, convincing their children to wear a mask all day is often easier said than done. Expert tips that can help you out coming up next. It's not worth millions of dollars, and it wasn't thrown from the Titanic into the open Atlantic, but that doesn't make a lost wedding ring any less special to a Utah woman. Luckily, some local divers refused to give up. Elle Thomas has the story. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, we got it. <laughs> this was the moment. We got it. Lost hope was found. Here it is. To have it on my finger again felt like so good. Rewind a couple of weeks. It started back here on Deer Creek Reservoir. We were just jumping around on it, playing, and when I jumped from one rung to the next, my ring just slipped right off, and I knew it just dropped, and it was probably 15 to 20 feet. A real-life treasure hunt. So I've had my ring for 18 years. But to Lindsay, he's like, someone's gonna go find it. And I like that. The lost item was rich in value and sentiment. Yes. My, it's my grandmother's yeah, diamond, and my husband designed it, and I realized it held all my babies and just. I was just so sad it was gone, you know? I didn't realize how much I loved it. If anyone has the equipment, anyone can go down, um, I'll pay you $100. Unlikely heroes from Wasatch County Search and Rescue answered her call for help. They went out for two hours and dove on their own time. They're volunteers and they just dove and dove and they couldn't find it. Eight days, two dives, an underwater metal detector and half a dozen search and rescue volunteers later. Are you serious? <laughs> they found it. He came up and it was on his pinky finger and he was he was so excited. They wouldn't accept Lindsay's reward. They were just so happy to help and it just made me feel, I was so happy to be in a community that takes care of each other like that. That memory for me of people doing good and being recognized for good, um, I think that's my favorite part. But everyone came away with something more precious than cash or a diamond that day. I can't believe they got it. Pretty amazing. Well, Bowen says she's learned her lesson. Take off your ring before you go to outdoor activities. This is a live look outside in Sioux Falls. And soon Marcus has another check on our forecast into the weekend. That's coming up next, so stay with us. 
ABC World News Tonight follows our newscast, but before then, let's check in with Tim for what's coming up at 6. He's in the newsroom for us. Good afternoon, Tim. Hey, Sophie. Good afternoon. Of course, on ABC's World News Tonight, the latest on that appearance today by the Democratic White House hopefuls making their first public appearance. Kamala Harris and uh, Joe Biden will have that, of course, on World News. Closer to home, traffic on Gordon Drive Viaduct slowed to a crawl this afternoon. That after a pickup truck lost its load, causing several other vehicles to collide. Lisa uh, spending much of the afternoon, a couple hours, uh, getting uh, reports from that. Meanwhile, it's a storm cleanup that continues in central Iowa. And in Des Moines, Drake University men's basketball players trading basketballs for chainsaws today. Also, we're talking with Woodbury County officials today after a possible uh, COVID-19 exposure inside the county treasurer's office. We'll find out if folks that have been in the office recently need to be concerned about that. We checked with Treasurer Michael Clayton this afternoon. We'll share his comments. Again, that's at 6. All right, thanks so much, Tim. We'll see you then. And Mark, it's a quick check mm -hmm. on our very, you said, slim yeah. storm chances yeah. moving through. Yeah, we can see one or two pop up tonight. I'm really not expecting too much. But if you do have that stray storm pop up overhead and you hear that rumble of thunder, thunder, don't be too alarmed. 70 degrees overnight tonight. Tomorrow, it's going to be another hot day. Plenty of sunshine and humidity to go around. All right, thanks a lot, Mark. That does it for us here at 5. I'll see you back here at 6. Until then, have a great night, everyone.